The Rebel Capitalist Show. How do you manage the emotional roller coaster? Because it's one thing to sit here and talk about. I think everyone can read this in a book and say, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. But to actually execute, I mean, you've got so much experience. I'm sure it's far yeah. easier for you. But I'm, I'm sure that's nothing. It's something you actually had to learn, even though your father was in the business. So how did you learn to manage that emotional roller coaster to make sure that you're making rational decisions and not knee jerk reactions? And what tips would you have for the average Joe and Jane, uh, regardless of their time horizon, to, to manage their emotions better? Man, that's a great question, George. So emotions are, you know, the enemy of all trades. Yeah, right. right. It, it, you know, if you can, you know, the whole idea being, if you can keep your head while those about you are losing theirs, you are going to be in really good shape as a commodity trader, right? You know, you kind of just bend that old saying. And, um, you know, so you're looking for those periods of volatility where you get to pray with an E, where sort of something falls into, you know, your, your execution strategy, um, you know, markets are moving quickly and you get to trade and sort of see a trade through the way you saw it happening. Right. So that's that's something that happens when the markets are going fast. But to take the emotion out, what I've tried to do is make everything a calculated bet with a binary outcome. You know, and so, you know, if I if I'm bullish home builders, I, I've been in situations, for example, where I've been bullish sector for three months and not gotten the opportunity to get into it. Right. And once you get the opportunity to get into it. All you're really doing is saying, OK, I, I'm putting on um, you know, a four to one ratio bet here because I'm going to bet at, from this price that it's got a chance to increase, you know, say, 20 percent where I can put a stop loss five percent below the market. Mm -hmm. And now I've basically taken the emotion out. Yeah, right. right. I'm, I'm, I've, you know, I've got a binary. I've got a stop on the downside that I know that I'm getting out. I've got a target on the upside. I know that I'm going to have to manage things in between. But if I really, if I have those two data points and I'm watching closely, I've taken a lot of the work out of the trade and a lot of the, the heart and the sweating to the point when you realize that selling out of a loss is a very regular and natural thing to do as a trader, mm -hmm. you become friendlier to accepting the losses. Right. When you look at your when you look at your ability to gauge markets and say, OK, even if I'm a great trader, I'm going to look to be right 55 percent of the time right. because I'm going to be able to stack those bets when I see them going my way. But at the same time, you want to be able to take you know, the emotion out so that when it doesn't go your way, you've just got one plan. Right. The ejector seat plan. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that that is part of trading. And if you have a system for which I do, getting into a trade, staying into a trade, monitoring a trade like I've developed over time, I've basically, you know, I put my positions on and then I kind of sit back like this until it triggers, until something triggers, right? A, a take profit or a stop loss. Of course, we're managing the whole time and taking in data points, but I really want to take as much emotion out of it so that I say, yeah, my bet is this stock goes, you know, it's at 45. My bet, it goes to 50 before it goes to 44. Yeah, right. And so, you know, that I, don't, I don't need to be emotional about that. And once you realize that you're really just in the casino, playing each hand, losing some, winning some, losing some, winning some, you know, you, you, your, your winning trades perform for you. And if your system is set up right, they're going to do the work and they're going to generate, the, um, you know, the income and your system will keep you in it long enough to outweigh four or five losers, right? And so you just have to accept the point. This is one of those losers. Get out of it. You know, and that that's really how you take emotion out of it is have uh, binary outcomes and not always and always understand that the market is not always going to do what you thought it was going to do. That's really the short answer. You've got to reprogram your brain to believe that a job well done or trading well or investing well has nothing to do with your P&L. But it's if you followed the rules of the game. Yeah. So the, the measurement of success, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, is how well you play and not your P&L. Because and if you're able to, it seems very counterintuitive, but if you're able to do that over the long run, you're going to have a mathematical edge. And ironically enough, your, your P&L will most likely be a hell of a lot better than if that's your initial focus. Is that accurate to say? 
Totally. That's a great way of backing out of it, George. You know, everybody's got a system for playing cards and it's like the same thing where, you know, when I play blackjack, my idea is to stay alive for six hours because I know that during that six hour period, there'll be 10 or 15 minutes when the dealer is just caving in. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. that's when you're like, oh, this is this is actually it. Like she can't win a hand. You know what I mean? And, and you learn that and you feel that. And so that's where trading becomes, you know, trading, trading becomes staying alive until you can say, OK, this is one of those times. Right. So put my bet in the circle. If you get blackjack, you take my money. You know, and it's just constantly applying that over and over. And you realize that just stick to the system. The system works. Right. It's like any sports team. I, you know, I heard you say that, you did, you know, you're an athlete, you played hockey, you played golf. Um, but, you know, either sport, it's always like, look, if you stick to the fundamentals over the long run, you're going to outperform guys that aren't sticking to the fundamentals. Right. Or aren't doing the training. It's the same way if you're applying your system and making sure that you are cutting losses and letting profits run, which is your job as a trader. And you've got to figure out how to do that. But if you stick to that knitting, in the end, the score will the score will be fine because you protect. In the end, you started off by the starting point is protect the nest egg at all costs, which means when stop loss levels are hit, you get out, and there's nothing to talk about. Would you rather? I'll take it one step further. Would you rather take a let's say a five percent loss while abiding by your rules, or have a twenty percent gain while breaking the rules? I usually try to take, you know, I'd rather stick to the rule book, man, yeah, you know, and, and be a, a 5% gain, a 5% loss to me is, is, is like water off a duck's ass. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I lose 5%. You know, George, I have some rules about entering trades where, you know, if I get into a trade on a Tuesday or Wednesday, I have an expectation set for Friday's close. And if it doesn't reach my expectation in some way that the, to show that that trade is performing, I just get out, right? I just get out. Sometimes it's a 5%, sometimes a 2% loss, sometimes it's a 2% gain, but I always have some kind of a minimum level of saying, okay, I got into this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If it doesn't close here Friday or God forbid below this price, I am gone, right? right? And those are usually very tight like windows, right? Like it's only going to, it's only, um, a level, a trajectory that the stock is going to get to in two days, right? So how far can it go? And, you know, I'm always giving it a really short leash. Like I get out of more positions on the Friday close just because I'm not that impressed mm -hmm. than I can even care to tell you. And it's really just to stay alive so that I can come in Monday and play offense again. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's staying alive for, for things like that. Yeah, I, I think I was able to beat the dead horse sufficiently, but but I think it's so crucial, and I that's why I know it's kind of maybe boring for some people, but I hopefully it really has an impact because it should be very profound and just a, a mindset shift in probably ninety nine percent of the people that I see commenting. So understanding what we're talking about, looking at the the legends, you know, the Druckenmillers, the the Jim Rogers and whatnot, all the guys and gals and market wizards, and then your experience as a professional trader and using rules-based systems, trying to eliminate emotion from the equation. How, if, if that's your framework, if that's the lens that we're looking through, how do you view what's happening right now with the meme stocks? Oh, I, I literally, I, I have disdain for them, to be totally honest with you, right? Like it's it, for, for me, I, I stay in my lane to the point that like, I won't even know what the main stock ticker stands for until I can't stand seeing it in my Twitter feed. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. like it's, it's just one of those, like, I didn't even know GME was GameStop until, you know, I didn't know what GameStop was until the whole thing had already gone berserk I mean, because right. I have such a, I have, if there's one thing I've learned, George, and that I'm, I'm whether it's good or bad, but I practice it is I have a noise cancellation policy that is impenetrable. So when I'm focused and dialed in on my natural resources, transports, energy trades, there is nothing that you can put in front of me that is going to detract my attention from that. Mm -hmm. There is no AMC option. There is no, you know, there's no play. There's no Wall Street bet on the board 
that I care more about than managing the positions that I know, that I know how to um, trade, that I know how to interpret tailwinds and headwinds of. Yeah. So my noise can't, you know, for, for that stuff, I turn it off. I realize I've had a great conversation with Dimitri Kofinas about it, about how it is very much, you know, total nihilism, you know, mm-hmm. toward proper risk taking, toward proper money management, toward, you know, just being sensible with your cash. And yeah. so I kind of, I, I kind of turn it off. I stay away from it. And, you know, I, I just let those guys play in that sandbox and stick to the lane that I'm in because I find more times than not, if I try to jump into that pool, I wind up getting burned immediately. You know, and I learned that decades ago, you know, that when, when, whenever the stock is the most popular stock in the room, I'm usually running the other way. That's just the way I operate. 